and so a terrified Great Dane, keeping up with, like, or, you know, a six-five sh- male, a white yeah, male, <laughs> Shaggy. You know, he he's got he's faster than Usain Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> are, are we a solid race. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows uh, though. He's okay. also not real at all. Yeah, well, yeah, it's also a cartoon, so it's <laughs> yeah. not, that's not even really. But, you know, technically, Shaggy is the fastest man alive. <laughs> that's true. Um, I'd argue that. Okay. He's real to me. So, what's up? Uh, I'm Santiago Armones. Uh, hello, and again, welcome to Bit Death. I started that out of order. Um, all right. This is Grayson, and I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Walter Blythe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Grayson Ham. Cool. Um, what do y'all do? <sighs> what do we do, Walt? Well, we have a dog, and we spend time <laughs> with him pretty often. Way too much time with the dog. Grayson sleeps with him. I don't. We cuddle hard. He's got really <laughs> nasty farts, though. Nasty farts. So it's the worst alarm clock in the morning that you could possibly experience. <laughs> But but it wakes you up. It does wake me up. It does wake me up. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Walt's only sleeps in my room on Thursdays and Fridays, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to be more serious, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> we're in a band called Space Release. Not Space Release, Space For Lease. With uh, a four. Huh? With, with a number four. Number four, yes. Uh, <laughs> how did that... Well, for one... What, what do y'all play? Well, we're, uh, I mean, we've kind of considered ourselves a new genre of psychedelic rock, a new generational okay. rock, kind of for this up and coming generation. I'm down with that. Um, we kind of, we have a lot of different influences as a band. We mm-hmm. all kind of, kind of come from different musical backgrounds. So we kind of hone in those influences and, mm-hmm. and create a unique sound within ourselves. Um, here recently, we're, we've been working on a new record, uh, pushing to release, um, called High Reef. Um, it's something that we've all been working on. Um, Walt has mentioned a lot. It's kind of like our platform yeah. record. You know, this is the record. All original members. Um, well, I mean, we've had a record out before, Space Release, but um, different members of the band. Um, mm-hmm. So this is actually the first record where I feel like us as a band is in a, in, in a great spot to uh, really kind of showcase exactly who we are as a band and yeah. the music that we really, really want to bring. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Yeah. Uh, what does either of you play? Oh, I play piano, and I'm the lead singer. Cool. I play guitar, and I occasionally sing, but mainly I just talk between songs. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really bad at that. He's actually really good at it. I just have this problem where I talk too much. <laughs> I'm really bad. No, I mean, it's good to have someone <laughs> to vamp because it's it, it's it's cool live though for us because like uh you know we we get some little interplay on stage and you know we we say goofy stuff sometimes but also we'll, we'll say some cool stuff we'll say some good stuff. <laughs> uh, Grayson sings about really awesome things and um, yeah, and I think it, it's good to, it's good to change up the mood here and there and I, I like to you know say some goofy stuff. And it's like uh, for me it's like it's really hard to sing like serious songs. To sing serious songs and then try to like be funny after a song, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. to attach like this, have this emotional attachment with somebody, yeah. and then to try to like change the whole mood <laughs> and be like super funny. You know, that's really yeah. kind of, it's difficult for me to do that because everything that I write and it means so much mm-hmm. to me. You know, so for me to like sing these songs and then just to snap out of it, you yeah, know, it's it's not very ideal, and that's kind of where Walt kind of takes in that role of like yeah. Breaking the ash, you could say. If you've ever seen any videos with Busta Rhymes, he has a really <laughs> short guy on stage that uh, is just his hype man. I like to think of myself yeah. as something like that. <laughs> Great description. <laughs> Walt is the perfect hype man. Oh. For sure. Also, Busta Rhymes gets live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I do feel it's like one of the biggest awkward things that you have to go up on stage oh, and yeah, like man. just like – scream your heart out about feelings or whatever. I don't think I've been in a, in a more vulnerable position, yeah. honestly. You know. And and ask people to pay you for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and pay attention, yeah. you know, to actually, to, yeah. 
And buy merch, yeah. Get us to the next spot, you know. Um, but yeah, like you said, man, there's literally, for me, there's not not been another point in my life where I've felt more vulnerable and just, mm-hmm. you know, having to be myself uh, and kind of share, you know, these experiences and, and the songs that I've written and all that, you know. And every night's kind of different. You don't know mm-hmm. how people are going to take it. but uh, And that's kind of the whole experiment in it all, you know. Yeah. But it's you get very... Um, it gets exciting to see, you know, the different reactions that you get, no mm-hmm. matter where you're going. You know, we do a lot of touring. Yeah. Um, we're, we try to get out of the state as much as possible. Hmm. Um, because I feel that's a very important for young artists to, you know, <laughs> in this day and age, you know, to travel. get exposure. Yeah. And I think we all have that certain mentality to travel. You know, we all have that. Mm. We all like that adventure of getting out of state, getting into new um, experiences that we've never experienced before. Um, and I just feel that's super important for young bands. And uh, what what's the? All oh, right, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say on like a on a on a pretty real note though, um, being in different towns or states and cities, and even if we're on stage trying to talk to people because that's where the basis of this question went, or you know what we yeah, were talking yeah. about. But even just like meeting people in public when we're around in the town, like trying to get across who you are, and you know three sentences or less (laughs) is practically impossible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's really hard to try and convince somebody to be like, Hey, we're doing this thing. We're not where you would normally see us. We're, we're, we know nobody here, maybe a few people, but like, believe us, believe in us (laughs) and, um, buy our, buy our things. And it's such a hard thing to say to someone and and to get it across in a way like, because you're so vulnerable and you're so like, um, you know, you're in a light, that mm-hmm. is shining on you, and if you don't say the right thing at the right time, right. then somebody's going to be like, nah, nah, I'm not about it. Right. Or you could be <laughs> saying all the right things at the right time, and then at one point you don't say the right thing, and that's yeah. what stands out, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a hard line to walk sometimes. <laughs> especially, I mean, trying to convince people in three sentences or less, especially in a bar scene at 11.30 at night, <laughs> you know, when, when heavy booze is going on, you know, it sometimes can be yeah. a little difficult. But that's, I mean, that's the, that's the reality, honestly. That's yeah. what we've kind of, I've picked up on. I think we also do a really good job of um, uh, having fun afterwards and not like saying like going out and being crazy, but like going and meeting people and being like, let's hang out, like, yeah. like get to know us a little bit. And I think those people that take the time to try and do that with an artist, uh, even if you know we're nobody, like you know we're literally not anything big. These people probably never heard of us before, but it, it's so cool to get to hang with people in other parts of the country and mm-hmm. learn about where they're from and what their lives like. And then, like it's like more us trying to figure out about them than them trying to figure yeah, about us. And sure. I think that's like the coolest part because I mean, yeah, we are st- like they're locals. You know, we're strangers in yeah. this area. So you would <laughs> people sit there and think like you're the artist, but at the same time, we are just normal dudes. So I mean. Yeah, casual conversation can go many places when you're meeting people like that and, and, and figuring out those certain things. All you know? these towns are kind of like art in themselves, like getting to learn about the culture, the community, and yeah. stuff like that. It's it's cool. But I mean, honestly, whenever you like get to hang out with people in that way, like that really is them getting to know you. Yeah, and, exactly. Like, and, and it gets them to actually care about exactly. you outside of just like hey i just played at the show but mm-hmm. like they get to know you as a person and right so that in the most purest form man I mean, yeah it's really great <laughs> we're not going back to a fancy bus or a, a cool hotel God, no. or anything like that no so. we are grinding <laughs> literally we are grinding i mean like we camp hard man we don't really do the hotel thing um so i mean if you could imagine playing a show at 11 30 12 getting done mm-hmm. at at, you know, one thirty-two. Yeah. Getting, you know, getting to your campsite at you know two thirty-three. Setting up all your gear. I mean, <laughs> it's it's doing it all again. it's a grind. Yeah. You know? And I think I think a lot of young artists should know that. You know that that's yeah. kind of what it takes. And I didn't had no idea. You know, <laughs> I didn't even start writing or singing. You know, uh, music until I was about seventeen. I mean, mm-hmm. I've always played piano, but songwriting and all these things you know kind of developed later and i didn't even play with a drummer until i got to acm Mm -hmm. you know so there was a lot of things that i've learned especially being on the road yeah about just the way the industry works Mm -hmm. and you know the way the appropriate way to to operate as a band you know yeah and and that's something that they they can't teach you here no the they can give you so much experience but like they can't tell you what it's like to uh 
to go on the road. Exactly. I don't know what it's like to go on the road. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, and I don't think you realize how much fun it is until you're home. Yeah. You know, you're out there. It's like, like the grass is always greener kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When you're on the road, you're missing home. And then when you get home, you think about all the little things that happened <laughs> on the road that made it so great. Yeah. And then you really can't wait to get back out there and do it again. Yeah. So. And I think there's really no way to teach it. I think it, mm-hmm. it, it teaches itself and it, uh, it, it, it presents itself in such a learning aspect that you don't you it's one of those things that you never you never know that it like it doesn't occur to you that you're learning while you're doing right. it but it's like it's character building you know you don't wear yeah. shoes and you run on concrete forever you're gonna get these fat calluses well that's what <laughs> happens when you're on the road yeah. but that's just so much fun and love and passion and also just like the the bad parts that go into it things like cars breaking down tires going flat you know just random little things like that but then you realize at the end of it you're like it made it that much better and uh Mm. that's that's it's probably the coolest part of it and there's really nothing else like it man so what made what made you guys at least at the very beginning go i want to make music for a living uh make me man <laughs> that was something i truly didn't know i wanted to do until uh i like i said i was about 17 18 yeah um i was a huge sports fanatic i love sports you know i grew up my dad coached me in soccer till for like 10 years mm-hmm. you know um did travel teams moved into basketball yeah it was super focused into basketball um but like i you know being 17, 18, you kind of start maturing in these ways where you start thinking about your future and kind yeah. of what, what, what direction you want to take. And uh, I kind of realized for me being, you know, a point guard at a, you know, a 3A school and being 5'10", <laughs> you know, I didn't really see a future for yeah. me in that type of way. But piano and music had always been there for me. Yeah. It was like I didn't know. It's like it knew before I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it was... It was always there for me. It mm. always made me feel a certain way that I couldn't get anywhere else. Um, and everybody always told me, man, like you're, you know, always kind of impressed with me learning by ear. You know, mm. I didn't really like learn traditionally like piano or any, yeah. any music like that. Everything was by ear. So people were really fascinated in that. And I was kind of like always, you know, tried to stay humble. <laughs> like, man, you're, it's, you're in a small town, all this. And, um, but then, you know, I started growing some confidence at 17, 18 and, and taking some more direction with it, you sure. know, and really started focusing on songwriting and um, and really decided, you know, by my senior year that that's really what I wanted to do. And yeah. I, I felt like it was important for me to find the right area or the right school to, sure. to hone in on that. And I had looked at some different schools um, all over the country and literally took a tour here at ACM, you know, living an hour away yeah. um, from my hometown and looked at the school one time, man. I was like, this is, this is it. This is yeah. where I want to be. <laughs> I remember uh, telling my friends, I used to, I, when I really knew that this is where mm. I want to be, I, I go up to the fourth floor, which is now it's a, it's a practice room, but that's where all the keyboards used to be. Yeah. Where all the pianos, like 25 different pianos. And I walked into that room with my dad and I looked yeah. at him and I was like, this is the spot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like this a lot. So when I, when I saw that, I really was, I was convinced. So I, I, I think to answer your question, you know, around that time of, you know, 17, 18, look, like I said, looking for your, trying to figure out what your future holds. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I really felt like music kind of started becoming a more part of me yeah. all around. So, And I mean, like, did you never even really see like an option of like, well, I guess I'll do sports or something, or I guess I got to like go to business school or something. Or was it always just like, I I have nothing else. Yeah. Like talking like music sense. Yeah. Yeah, man. I've never, no, no. I've always just been like, this is it. This is what (laughs) I want to do. I've, I've, I think being the youngest in my family, I have an older brother who's uh, five years older than me and then a sister who's two years older than me. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of saw their paths um, my brother took the traditional college route, which, I mean, was a great decision for him. Yeah. Um, my sister took the same route. And uh, I just have always, even from being a little kid, I've always just kind of wanted to do and be something different. Yeah. So when I kind of realized that I had that craft of playing piano, um, I really held on to that, like 
doing something unique, doing something mm-hmm. that nobody else has really done. Not even really in my family, but maybe like my hometown, you know, coming from a small town, yeah. just like taking a different route, regardless <laughs> of, you know, what the outcome's going to be. Um, I really wanted to do that yeah. for myself. Um, really, yeah, just for myself, uh, you know, dodging these kind of not saying mistakes that my siblings have made, but you kind of, you learn sure. from your siblings. You, you know, you, you're a sponge being the youngest. Yeah. You know, you no, absorb... I, I, I'm the youngest yeah. of, of two older brothers too. So cool. like, I, you know I exactly do learn I'm from their mistakes or like, and, and they also kind of like take you under their wing whenever it's like, Oh, I, I went through this before you want to exactly. do this. One. I mean, and that, and that, that makes you light years ahead. Man. Yeah. I think it, it makes you more mature mm-hmm. as a human being because you're sitting here. That's like, I look now and a lot of my friends from my hometown are actually my brother's friends, Yeah, you know, who are all four or five years older than me, <laughs> but we all kind of connect on this level now since I'm older and matured, yeah. but, uh, and you didn't really, I didn't see it at the time how much I was maturing and, um, just kind of looking at the world maybe like in a, in a different light than a lot sure. of my friends might have been doing, you know. And uh, at times it was kind of hard because you are kind of isolated in this area where it's like <laughs> I'm the only one doing this thing. I'm the only one at, you know, yeah. ACM, don't really know anybody. But I think that's the weird secret part we all kind of love too. It's because <laughs> you are out on your own. You are doing something different. And it's sometimes mm-hmm. a little scary, so. Yeah. But I always knew. I mean, I didn't always know, but I always felt that – whatever happened, music, there was going to be something. Yeah. My career was going to have something to do with music, especially like in, in that older uh, days of my high school career or whatever. So, well, What kind of stuff were you listening to that uh, inspired you to be a musician? Man, weird, weird shit. <laughs> like not things that... Uh, I listened to a lot of uh, classical music. I loved a lot of film score. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one one of them that I uh, Black Hawk Down, Hans hmm. Zimmer. Yeah, Hans Zimmer's excellent. Dude, I know it's it's weird, right? Like super <laughs> weird, dude. I used to listen. I had That's so much, so much film score <laughs> music from all these yeah, different yeah. movies that I that I uh, really listened to, and it was just like there's this emotional attachment that I found myself mm-hmm. getting with, where it was like listening to this music. I really got inside my own head. It was like thinking about myself morally and. Um, um, just what I wanted to be and what kind of yeah. legacy I wanted to leave behind. Even at, you know, at 11, 12 years old, you know, these were the <laughs> things I was like, uh, doing, there's this, uh, movie, we were soldiers with, uh, Mel Gibson, um, where I remember being a little kid and there was a certain part in that movie where this, there was a certain part, um, it's at the end of the movie where they're, they're going over this hilltop, um, yeah. because they're like super outnumbered, but they don't even give a shit, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but there's this great uh, soundtrack that plays or, or song that plays mm. during the scene. And I remember I'd have all my action figures with me and I would, I would <clears throat> live out the scene with my action figures while it was happening on the, on the screen <laughs> because I love the music so much that I wanted to create my own like reality yeah. with my, like my toys and shit. <laughs> so like there was always these weird things that were going on, like with this type of music that yeah. really, uh, made me kind of fall in love with that emotional feeling of mm-hmm. when I heard these types of songs and stuff, the, the feeling I would get. And that's what really like led me into playing piano, like, sure. a, you know, seen as like a classical instrument. And my granddad played a lot of piano and really looked up to him. So, but that, and then to completely flip that, I listened to a lot of hip hop, Yeah, a lot of hip hop, DMX, 50 Cent, I mean, all the gangster, like, the yeah, gangster yeah. shit. Like, Who shot you? <laughs> exactly, yeah, Biggie, I mean, Biggie Tupac. I mean, and that's where, like, kind of going back to the athletics. Sure. Where it's like, that was kind of more the influence where you were listening yeah, to that, yeah. kind of, that kind of style. So it was a weird crossover between this, like, <laughs> classical film score music and then, like, this hip-hop rap because my brother listened to a lot of it. And so we mm-hmm. had this, like, MP3 player that was just his because was, this was way back in the day before iPods were even a yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. And uh, he had all this type of like hip hop and stuff on his phone or on his, <laughs> his little MP3 player, and I would always steal it and go listen to all this music. Yeah. Um, and so I was learning at a very young age about all these <laughs> artists and and mimicking them from to a T. Yeah. You know their lyrical schemes and everything. So there was at times I would get in some serious trouble, like just like <laughs> if you can imagine, you know. Rough Rider DMX and just like singing every line of that not knowing 
yeah what any of it meant and then i was singing all that and my brother comes in and is like dude you can't say a lot of the things that he's saying in public. You know, like, you gotta, you gotta be careful about that. And I'm just like, oh man, you know, I didn't, I didn't know any better. You know, it's just like, so there's, there's these weird uh, scenarios that kind of introduce yeah. me to these types of styles of music. You know, and I think also that those two things that he just said, film scoring and hip hop, is it's the exact same today. Like when we, when we go like. Like we were on tour once and we saw The Revenant and all we could talk about after the movie was like, mm -hmm. you know that one scene when like in between they had this crazy sound like this and we didn't even realize it. Yeah. And then the other night we were in Lincoln and we're showing up to the gig just like bumping some heavy Biggie Smalls. <laughs> it's the exact same today. And, and like we, it's like so uh, um, subconscious of us, I think. And that's just who we are. And yeah. Kind of all. And, and I think that's what makes us as a band um, and also makes us because that's what we've been doing our whole lives. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. What what brought you to rock music? I think it was just that me, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I would probably be doing all these like classical compositions by myself, singing these weird songs. If Walt didn't come into my life, <laughs> thanks, bud. <laughs> no, I think I think where the rock really lies, man. It, it's that it's in between those two, you yeah. know, in between the classical and the hip hop, right? In the in the media, and there's this there's there's rock. Um, We're also not traditional, so. Right, yeah, it's not very, yeah, it's not a traditional style of rock. We have a lot of different influences um, that we all kind of bring to the table. But um, I think <laughs> with, I think me as a, a, a huge inspiration for me as an artist, and this sounds so corny, I know, guys, <laughs> but a huge Radiohead fan. Uh, Radiohead's my favorite band. Um, really? Yeah. Well, I like you already, <laughs> man. And what about Coldplay? Uh, I I enjoy Coldplay. They're a little up softer. Until, people, up until you know, Viva La Vida, and then I okay, like, kept I, getting disappointed. It got a little more poppy after that. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. I yeah, I really love their uh, their old shit too. <laughs> parachutes is still honestly. Yeah. Death that. Cab. Do you listen to Death Cab for Cutie? I've recently dug into that. <sighs> See, I'm so. I'm honestly so bad with if, with other artists, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't listen to Death Cab. Oh, well, I mean, I think if you like <laughs> if you like older, softer Coldplay stuff, uh, Death Cab's kind of like the sadder counterpart to that. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. Well, I'll definitely have to check them out. I also think that Grayson has probably heard some Death Cab because yeah. I've definitely played some. But like, I, I give it to Grayson because it's amazing. Like, I, I'm I'm the kind of person that I love to just dive into this band and this record. And I've always been kind of yeah. like the you know like people are with their favorite basketball players, the stats and stuff. <laughs> but like, I, I find it like, I mean, this doesn't need to sound weird or like uh, anything like that. But like, I love the way that he appreciates music because he's not into it like that. Yeah. And like, you know, we'll say, Oh, this so-and-so band. Yeah. He'll be like, what, what are you talking about? And we'll play it. He'll be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Sure. It, it, <laughs> we, we have different forms of listening and yeah. it's, uh, yeah. So, so uh, I'll, I'll back him up there. It says he's probably heard Death Cat. He's probably he probably didn't like make a bad face or anything. Uh, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm in my own world a lot of the time too. <laughs> I think too, man. It's like I'm always in that position of like wanting to make great music too. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm thinking more along the lines of a songwriter. Like you always have your inspirations and stuff, but sure. for me, it's like I'm always trying to make that music that everybody wants to listen to. You know, yeah, I'm not sure. leave the bullshit out of it. Leave the right? bullshit out of it, man. I think you know, I'm always I'm sitting at a piano, you know, for five to six hours, maybe a yeah. day, you know, as opposed to listening to a bunch of different records. And sure. and there's nothing wrong with either one. I think it's mm -hmm. just like where my mentality and my drive is, is just creating and creating yeah, and yeah. creating, you know, that's what I love to do. There's nothing better than writing a new song and the band coming in and us performing it and all of us looking at each other like, this shit is dope. You know, yeah. there's literally, there's literally not a better feeling, you know, it's even better than like getting in the studio, you know, the studio mm -hmm. kind of gets, you get these, I wouldn't say nerves, but I mean, it's just a different scenario. But like when you're in your own house with, you know, and just feeling more <laughs> comfortable than ever mm -hmm. and showing these songs and, and all of us playing together. Those are the, the times that, you know, yeah. that I will always cherish, you know? Yeah. And I mean, like there's, there's that moment once, because there's like the hurdle of like sort of teaching everyone the song and like getting everything right. together. Oh yeah. And then once you, you're like, all right, and you run it, you're like, 
man, we like we made this. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and we definitely do, man, because like even and I'll even say like I come in with an idea. I come mm. in with a lyric like I'll have lyrics, I'll have a position and a direction with the song, but I mm. leave I love to leave things open ended with the band. Yeah. I don't come in and say this is how it's gonna go. You yeah. know, which is how, you know, some songwriters or some lead singers or whatever the case may be might do that. Yeah. I love leaving it open for um interpretation yeah. for the band and then we kind of all kind of come together and take this direction with it that i might not have even seen mm -hmm. you know it's writing it by myself which is why i love to do that yeah. because there are things that elements that all of us you know walt wesley brandon that we all contribute to that me just doing it all by myself i would have never seen this alleyway exactly. or this road to take so that's one of the greatest things about the way that we do songwrite is that mm -hmm. Uh, I think we all kind of know the position of how the song, like they know that I'm going to come in with the idea, but they also sure. know that I'm not going to come in here and try to, you know, micromanage. Exactly. Everything. I'm, you know, I'm going to leave everything open. I think that's why we do so well. Yeah. Um, because we all have these different musical backgrounds, like I've said. So I really like leaving that open too. So you can kind of bring those influences in. Yeah. into our own music you know what i mean as opposed I mean, to saying like this is our this is our genre this is what we need to shoot for <laughs> this is the type of niche market we need to be shooting for you know like yeah i mean that's the essence of collaboration yeah exactly no yeah <laughs> you just said that yeah you just made everything i say sound way simpler <laughs> <laughs> um can we hire you <laughs> yeah right um, you just got like 25 seconds of the real quick out. uh why is it called space for lease <clears throat> well, I was going to dive into that, but I didn't want to keep rambling. Go for it. Um, kind of the idea behind, we didn't want to dive into a specific genre. We didn't, mm. you know, when you think of space for these, I mean, you have no idea yeah. what to expect from yeah. this. You know what I mean? So I love that idea of, you know, putting out records. We put out this record, High Reef. We come out with the next record, um, whenever that case may be. And people still don't know exactly the direction we're going to take. So sure. it kind of leaves this anticipation for like, you know, what's, what's the next move, yeah. you know? So I think space release, it was kind of this idea of let's not put ourselves in a certain, let's not sure. box ourselves in yeah. all, 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 uh, all at once. Um, let's kind of leave this open. And that's, you know, I literally, Walt and I were driving to the studio one day. I was like a sophomore no as a freshman second semester sure yeah. and we were literally just driving to the studio saw a sign on the side of the road space for lease mm -hmm. and it just really hit on me because i was like we were trying to find because we had this sound that we were developing mm -hmm. we, we had songs we had plenty of songs yeah but we didn't know how we didn't know what's the right name to capture this sure you know and i think it's like this idea of two of like you know no matter what we're doing you know, there's always going to be room to grow. Yeah. You know, not to be fucking corny, but <laughs> Do space it. for lease. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be this room to grow and uh, as a, not even as a musician, but just as a person. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of that idea behind all that was like, you know, let's leave this like super open and vague in a way where we kind of can mm -hmm. take the direction we want with the band and not feel the pressure to like maybe you know, change the name if we had to or something, if we were, no, you know, it's, if, it's still you, you know? Right. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was like a good thing or not, but when I'm, I'm, it is now because we love it this way. But when, when we did that, when we were driving in the car and we saw that and we were like, yeah, that'd be cool. But we had been trying so hard to find a band name that we were like second guessing ourselves. We were just like, ah, oh, <laughs> we've been trying so hard. This isn't the one. Then we got to the studio cause that's where we were going. And the people that were helping us in the studio were like, yeah. You should do that one. That should be your name. That should yeah. be it. So it was like a little bit of reassurance, and it went a really long way. And uh, you know, I think it it, it worked out for yeah. us. Yeah, and I, we've definitely it's you know it's one of those things where it's like if we can hold on to it and make it our own. Yeah, it could really like turn out to be a beneficial thing. Like we of course like get flack. Like there's nothing more worse than you know going to a town that you've never been in and the people love your music and they're asking what your name is and you have to say it like four times to them yeah, yeah. like because we'll say space release and be, space release 
Space four, le- like you yes. know, there's just all these different things that, like. That so are- here's a test for you, podcast listeners. If I walked up to you and said "space release," I said "what space for lease?" Like "space," the number four lease, all one word. You'd be like, "What the hell?" Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> tell me if you caught that right there. You know, hit us up on Facebook or something yeah. and let us know. But <laughs> it's tough, but also once they ask so many times and you really put it in front of their face, yeah, they won't forget. They don't. And it's, yeah. it's cool. But we've also caught some flag where people are like, oh, it'll never sell. And yeah. we're like, <laughs> you watch us. We've, we've played shows where I remember playing a show and this dude yells out, what's your name? And I go, we're space for these. He goes, my name sucks. <laughs> <laughs> just like, thank you. This next song's a new one. <laughs> you know, like, like, I mean, so there's all types of characters out there, man. And honestly, like, you're going to find people that love your stuff. You're going to find people that don't care at all. Yeah. And far in between, you know. I mean, but it's just a matter of, like, remaining you and staying on your course <laughs> and not letting complete strangers that sure. you don't even know the names of kind of, like, alter your future or you know you yeah know, mess with your mind like that you just kind of kind of remain yourself and remain on your course and you know take the good with the bad and roll with it you know and at the same time like should you really trust a, a random drunken stranger oh. to, to hear you nope. correctly yeah, but anyways why, but tell me why the hell we care so much too you know like <laughs> as an artist like shit Should've this guy sure. is drunk as hell He's just, you know, he's three rows back and he's saying our band name sucks. He doesn't even know yeah. who I am. Why is this guy getting at me? <laughs> and, you know, the other people that are enjoying our stuff, you know, yeah. I kind of like block them out and just see this one dude that dislikes me or, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. We need to learn to heckle the heckler. Yeah. Yeah. Troll. <laughs> That's, that is technically calling trolling. Yeah. Um, and I mean, <laughs> term- and I, mean I, I, <clears throat> I get that enough, like. One, my name is Santiago Ramones, and right. so it's like, s- spell that. <laughs> right, it's a lot. And then, mouthful. and then the name of this podcast is Bit Depth, which is like, like you you don't hear that right. well. Bit, I like it, dude. Bit depth. I, bit depth. Bit depth. Bit depth. depth. Yeah, say that two five times fast. <laughs> it's original, man. I like it. <laughs> toy boat. Toy it's, boat. Toy boat. Yeah. Well, it, it's a pun, really, because the the. The point of the podcast is to have like deeper conversations, so the the podcast gets a bit deep. And dude, I love I love podcasts. I love uh, that where it's like <laughs> you kind of like. I mean, we're ta- we are a band. We're talking about music, but we can kind of step out of that realm mm-hmm. where it's not just music, music, music. You know, there's <laughs> other you know other things exactly. that are going on that we could also discuss that can still come back, you know, full yeah. circle to music, but. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. Let's and I there. mean, <laughs> right. I mean, going going with like expanding uh, beyond music is that I mean, so like I said earlier, another part of this podcast is uh, to explore sort of where you are spiritually or mm-hmm. what what that is to you. So, what do you really do? You believe in God? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I believe I believe in God. What, what is God to you? What is what is God? I I'll mean, ask you. It, it, and, I'll, and then I'll, I'll go from your answer. And, oh, and, man. Um, I mean, it's always tough whenever people ask me because this is my podcast and I've explained it a few times already. Right. But um, I want to hear it. I'm, I'm an atheist. Are you really? Um, Ooh. <laughs> cool. No, I, I, I like that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not saying I'm an atheist, but I, I respect it. You yeah. Know? And I'm, I'm kind of an atheist to the point of, like, anti-theist. Um, I won't attack people on, like, I'm not one of those guys that just, like, anytime anyone mentions God, I'll be like, oh, there is no God. Because nobody wants to hear that, and I like having friends. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Um. I'll, I'll kind of like, <laughs> you know, I'll say, I'll, I'll say for myself that it's like, I don't, I, you know, I don't really know to tell you the truth. And it's like, it's one of those things yeah, that's, um, and I, I think that's it. I think it's like, uh, I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to tell. And I grew up in a place where religion is such a huge thing and it's yeah. like very pushed on to you. Luckily, my parents didn't do that. Although they would be like, come on, let's go to church. Let's do this. Like, you know, they would talk about God and they want to pray at dinner and all this stuff. But like, you know. I, I kind of have a weird correlation. I wouldn't say correlation. I wouldn't even say connection, but this weird relationship with the word God. It's like I, you know, the universe came from somewhere. 
Sure. I don't know if it was a person. I don't know if it was a con- cognitive being. I don't know mm. if it was anything with consciousness. But I think there's this overlying energy within what we are and who we are that it 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 makes no sense and we'll never be able to figure it out. <laughs> and maybe, you know, I have this funny thought that – we're going to die, and it's like they're going to put us in a theater and show us everything we need to know all at once, right. and that's God. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, shit, tell me the answers. Come on. Where are we at? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I had to leave this long for that? No. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, though. Like, for me, it's, it's, it's like I, I, I want to believe that there's some reason. Sure. And so, like if I was to say I created this, new, this thing so it could be exactly like this and it would be just like that for every single person, but the universe isn't that way. But, you know, the energy came from somewhere, but it's like I can't put the word God to that. And I think sure. that's what gets me a lot is when people are pressing hard with God this and God that. Mm, and yeah. I know God and I talk to God and it's like, well, um, you know, I've heard some funny things and, you know um, – I don't like to sound like I'm hating on anybody or being rude by any means because like I, I will never get on to anybody for the way they believe, but I hate mm. it when it's like, well, God told me to do this. Sure. And it's like, well, God's never talked to me. <laughs> and I hate to say that. Like, I really don't like oh, yeah. saying that, or like, but. Or even back, dude, I mean, and I was in the same boat, man. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. And here I am, a 13-year-old kid going to a Baptist church, and, and <laughs> people are telling me that, you know, the fact that I was <clears throat> – um, baptized as an infant means that I'm not truly saved and all this weird shit and make sure. it and I have youth pastors who get mm-hmm. paid <laughs> to teach these things telling me that I'm wrong yeah. you know so at a very young age man it threw me for a loop on just exactly yeah what god was and what's the the appropriate way to teach people about being a good person sure. and and using you know whatever religion, the Bible, you know, whatever it is in the right way for people mm-hmm. and not using it as a way that's like super, just like this one road, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I woke up today and I, and I made it to work on time and, you know, there was this lady. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. And there's this lady out there and, you know, God just made me feel that I really needed to give her money. And I was like, man, sure. I mean, I guess if that's what makes you happy, but I, I there's just there's a lot of different ways to look at it, and I don't yeah. think there's really one right way. And to say that there is one right way to look at it is super naive in the yeah. society that we're living in right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Socrates looks down upon you. Yeah, if you know and, the answer. and also if if God is a real thing, he's a real person. At the end of the day, we can go talk to him when we when we you know deteriorate or whatever. Like, is God gonna be like? Uh, is is he gonna be happy that someone used his name and his like? His uh, all his his whatever he is to to force people to do something or yeah. to act a certain way mm-hmm. or be like you're not a good person because you're not doing what God wants and right. maybe God's like fuck you bro <laughs> that's not what I want right. like I didn't write that book who wrote that book yeah. did you write that book nah you didn't write that book 13, 13 and 14 do that. Yeah. yeah and I don't I don't want to go down that trail but I, I just I, I don't like it when people try to like press sure. it on me because like you don't know God I don't know God we yeah. don't know God and what if to me, God is a word. It's not. It's not even. It's not something that anybody can put a sure. pin on. It's a word that humans give power to. Yeah. Um, and that's like I was gonna read this quote from my phone dies real quick. I'm a huge fan of <laughs> Herbert Reeves, who's this philosopher. Hmm. Um, he says man is the most insane species. He worships an invisible god and slaughters a, a visible nature without realizing that this nature he slaughters is the invisible god he worships. So yeah. reading for me like. When I read that, you know, and I posted that like years ago and I've kept it in my phone for a sure. while. But uh, I see God in that sense, man, that God's kind of in this in, in nature. Uh, the mm-hmm. way that we, you know, our DNA structure and you look at a tree's kind of DNA yeah. structure and, and just the way that everything in life is, is super similar in a way. Yeah. Um, it just it makes me feel like there's this deeper connection that we as humans have – on this planet mm-hmm. and, and the fact that we sit here and we argue about, you know, who God really is while we're, you know, <laughs> arguably destroying the planet. It makes yeah. us all feel kind of shitty and like hypocrites. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're coming out and, and, and trying to teach the word of God. But at the same time, you know, what truly are you benefiting to society besides 
telling other people how you know they yeah. may need to live their lives and i am not hating on you know religion at all i think you know certain people find good things in religion mm -hmm. i just think always for me there was just this deeper sense of um not all i don't know if it was like i remember sitting there and reading and listening to stories of the bible and even at like 11 and 12 and just being like, how is that even a reality? Sure. Am I a shithead for thinking that that really <laughs> didn't happen? You know, am I going to hell because I yeah. sat there and hear, you know, you know, uh, freaking, no you you'd sit there and think about Noah's Ark, how like he loaded er two <laughs> of every animal into this thing, you know, like, and I'm sitting there, you know, and you see it in a visual sense of like a 12 year old kid yeah. where you're like, is that, is that really how does that happen you know you know and you start you start questioning all these like realities of how you know how these things could happen and you're just like and then you start i was always in that sense of like well am i you know am i wrong at looking at it like this am i, am I wrong at like thinking this deeply mm -hmm. and i think coming from a small town man where you had a lot of people that you know fell into these big churches like this that when you thought a little differently mm -hmm. you were kind of seen as this weird outcast yeah you know what i mean and that kind of really took a toll on me at first yeah. because you know you have friends and such that that go to these places and and because you, maybe you see things a little differently like you kind of lose touch with your friends and and things and then you start realizing like or questioning you know is it me and then you kind of go on these these advent or uh you know yeah adventures of your, like trying to find yourself yeah. and find out what it is you know what what am i trying to prove here what am i trying mm -hmm. to show the world what am i trying to influence yeah. and i think like with religion and God and all that, it's if any if the Bible teaches anything, man, which um, you know, it may not be the only way to live your life, right? There's sure. a, but but what it teaches can never really be wrong. You know, the stories that it tells about you know just doing more for your for others than you do for yourself, mm -hmm. no matter what religion you come from, how is that ever wrong? Yeah. you know what I mean. How is that ever a wrong thing to do? Yeah. And so I think those are the things that you need to take from, you know, these stories and of exactly. the Bible and not take things. We're moving in the society where it's like we're all becoming a little more smart, smarter about the way like we see these things and not taking everything so um, literally. It's, yeah. You know, kind of seeing it, you know, <laughs> figuratively speaking and how mm -hmm. you can, you know, take there's, it out of context. Yeah, there's metaphors for things and, <laughs> and there's deeper meaning than just like you know, just the stories that are, re that you're reading and, you know, trying to see it in this like super visual aspect, you know, there's, I think as a, uh, as a society, you know, we're moving to that period where we're, we're becoming better than that. You know, yeah. we're becoming, we're, we're seeing it for what it is Definitely. And, and we're expanding on it and we're, and we're, and we're growing. And, you know, there, there's at times there's a lot, I mean, you look at the world today and there's a lot of bad shit that is occurring that revolves a lot around religion. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, man, there can be a lot of good that comes from it, you know? Yeah. I just, if you teach it in the right way and you teach it for, you know, for, yeah. I think the, the appropriate way to, you know, teach young kids, you know, I went to, I went to Haiti on a mission trip, right? Sure. It was a IYF international youth fellowship. Hmm. And I thought we were teaching English, right? Cause mm -hmm. I, you know, I, would I consider myself a religious guy? Sure. <laughs> you know, that's my answer to that. But, you know, I didn't know how serious, you know, so I show up in uh, this camp in New York. Yeah. This training camp and um, everybody there is from um, South Korea. Huh. Like I am, me and my homie are the only, like one of like, it was a small fraction of us that were actually speaking English. Yeah. And then what I kind of come to figure, and I'm not trying to bash on this if they ever listen to this podcast or anything, <laughs> oh, whatever. But just the way that when we went to Haiti and we're teaching people about the Bible, I didn't agree with it. Yeah. I, I didn't agree with the way that we were, you know, teaching these Haitian kids that didn't know any better. Yeah. And, you know, these people were super um, literal about every story that was occurring. Yeah. I remember, you know, our, our own preacher was sitting there talking about uh, how his wife didn't want to have or wanted to have a natural birth even though it wasn't healthy even mm -hmm. though multiple doctors told her this is not good for you yeah um to have a natural birth and they said you know but we just talked to god you know we went to god and god told us that this is what we needed to do sure. and in those stories just like that that's what gives religion a bad name yeah. is when you start using your own personal influence and saying 
you know, God did this for me because you have a bunch of kids here learning these things from you sure. and, and learning it for the wrong reasons, yeah. in my opinion. So I was always, you know, it was a weird scenario for me to be in that place. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it really opened my eyes on, you know, how I wanted to be as a person and how I kind of wanted maybe people to see me um, when it came to those aspects of religion yeah. and, um, uh, you know, of God in general. So, uh, so like, to you, what does it mean to be a good person? Like I said, I mean, be genuine, be yourself. Um even, uh, I mean, like we just met, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, and I mean, like, but like, I'm being as real to you yeah, as yeah. I, you know, like there's like no bullshit, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it doesn't matter, you know, if, if it's who it is, you know, if you, I think like, if you were, if you, if you be yourself to the best of your ability, mm. no matter, you know, what part of your day you're in, if you're having a shitty day or, you know, and you're meeting strangers and even though, you know, meeting a stranger, or, you know, it could be some homeless dude on the street that you walk by and you just say hey to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those those are qualities for me that define a good person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, doing things purely on the uh, on the simplicity of not doing it for yourself but doing it for others, you know? Yeah. So people find, you know, that was like <clears> – an example would be my coach in basketball used to hate me so much – because I would pass the ball too much because I was so <laughs> enthused with letting somebody else get that fulfillment yeah. of like scoring a basket that I got in trouble for it. Yeah. You know, like I got, like I would get yelled at because instead of me taking that shot that was, mm. you know, easier, I would give it to somebody else because I wanted them, you know. So, you know, if you take that on a day to day basis or in, in everyday <laughs> life, it was like, I want to give somebody that yeah that just feeling of like goodness you know mm -hmm. that there's people out there that are cool and it's not like not such a dark world that sometimes people <laughs> like might see it as you know and I, yeah. I think when you do that um you really find good things coming back your way yeah you know it might take time um and it might not always be just because you do good things for other people regardless of the shape or size you know it might be opening a door for an old lady coming into a store or whatever you know just small things like that you know you you might not see those in return yeah um but that doesn't matter you yeah. know it doesn't matter and i think that's what's the biggest part about it is you don't do it hoping that somebody does it for you one day you just do it because you feel like it's the <laughs> right thing to do exactly you know and that's kind of what my parents had always taught me um and that's where, where really where i learned that from and yeah so being a good person, that's really kind of where I see that. Yeah, and, and that goes beyond religion. That goes beyond just that God. breaks down the walls yeah. of religion. You know what I mean? Exactly. It really does. Which is like where I come back to you being an atheist, where it's just like I get it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I respect like what it. Even though we might have disagreements, or that doesn't mean that we have to be enemies. Nah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and I, I think like I mean, it's just gonna take time with society to figure that out. You know, mm -hmm. that just because we disagree, it doesn't mean that we have to be enemies, you yeah. know? So, and I think, I mean, there's so many different things that we could apply that to. Yeah. You know, with religion, with politics. I mean, mm. look at our election, bro. <laughs> look at our election. I mean, I mean, what? yeah. I yeah. mean, there's so it's, many, it's there's so true. many different things. That, <laughs> but there's also so many different influences that come into play where, mm -hmm. you know, money and power and these things yeah. where religion, where, I mean, those things, you know, they become more important now because you have you have something to lose, like yeah. money or or power. So you kind of um, can be a little more bitter. What what would you like to see change in society? <sighs> uh, I mean, uh, I could be, I could be, I could be a me beauty pageant really hard question. Right, I could so. be a beauty pageant <laughs> contest or like one of those chicks <laughs> of Miss America and just. Um, yeah, but the difference is that you mean it. Yeah, <laughs> world hunger, no more world hunger. Uh, you know, <laughs> also, education, free education for all. Also, for me, a big thing is like just like possessions and 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 attitudes and and self selflessness or selfishness. Sure. Would, like to me, it's like I just. I wish it wasn't so hard to get a lot of these things out of the way. Mm -hmm. And back to what he was talking about, you know, seeing a homeless person on the street saying, hello, well, what if I was that homeless person, a rich exactly. guy walked by and told me, like, you know, didn't pay me mind. But what if a rich person, someone with all the possessions in the world walked by, 
had on normal clothes like you and I sitting here and sat down and had the best conversation. And then later I find out all these things and it's like, I just wish the world would operate like that at times yeah. where it's like, I, I want, it's, it's, it's not that hard, but it's also not that easy for everyone to be on the same playing field. Sure. There's just way too much that goes into everything, but it's like, you know, we just, like you said, we just met you. And sometimes, you know, we, <laughs> we, we'll meet industry people with music. Like I say, sometimes we'll go full circle. Or we'll meet people that are big, like preachers or religious fanatics or not religious fanatics or atheists or this and that. But they, like, just to get yourself to this level playing ground and don't let any bullshit get in the way. Yeah. It's like, that's all I hope for the world. Right. And then, like, and, and just give me the time of day for who I am, not for what I have. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, even that, to the point, I think, my parents taught me well, and I would speak for Walt too, you know, yeah. never meet a stranger. Never, never look at somebody as a stranger. Yeah. You know, always meet somebody and be, you know, enthusiastic and, you know, for real. And, and optimistic, and I guess. <laughs> and for me, dude, I think the one thing I would want to see change is education. The way that we educate ourselves. Sure. Uh, and not even in our country or in our state. I mean, God, leave. I mean, <laughs> teachers don't get paid shit here, bro. And then they could hop down. They just hop over the border down to Texas. Mm. And, you know, and you could make a living. Yeah. But it's crazy. I mean, in like even in, uh, uh, you know, within our own state, but even outside of our country. I mean, you yeah. look at third world Africa, third world India, mm -hmm. where they just don't have the tools or even Haiti. Where they yeah. don't have the education or the mindset to know any better about the the world, the reality that's around exactly. them. You know, they're stuck on this island, and you have these. You know, we come in here. I remember, dude, driving down the streets on these on these we call them toot toots, <laughs> and you're on these top of these buses, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you just have Haitians flipping you off, telling you like, "Fuck you, dude, go home." Like speaking English at you, yeah. And you, in you know, in. Uh, you can't, they speak like this, uh, um, it's like a slang of French called uh, yeah. Creole. Mm -hmm. And, but what you start realizing, what I started realizing, you know, and that is that these people aren't dumb. You know, these people are speaking English. They're speaking three languages and I'm stuck here trying to teach English. Yeah. You know, there's, there's education in different, uh, in different aspects, but yeah. I think it's, um, it's just the way that you can, they can get education, the way that it can get to them, you know, the truth. Like, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that comes with money and empowerment. But I think if there's one thing that I would really want to change is just the whole structure of just the way we teach and the way we learn. Sure. Especially in America, especially in Oklahoma. Yeah. What is it that, that you wish that you had gotten whenever you were in school? Shorter hours. <laughs> you know i mean you look over in sweden dude they teach like three hours a day it's like three to five hours like sure. to their elementary and middle school kids they come into school and they learn for three to five hours and it's like i think it's like four days a week so they have three yeah. day weekends and you're going to school for like four think of how much more prone you would be to be excited to go in and learn things yeah if you're only going to be there for four to five hours yeah. As opposed to waking up Monday through Friday going, damn. Got to go back to prison. Eight to three, <laughs> same thing every day. Here's my schedule. You know, I think I think kids pick up on that quick, man. Yeah. I mean, when you get to high school, you start realizing like, damn, this is just the same thing. Mm -hmm. over. You know, and there's no mix up. So I guess that's one thing for me. I wish there was more time for like mentorships. And not yeah. just like seeking out a mentor and be like every school should give you a mentor, but also just being able to have a teacher or someone or also like uh, for our situation, we go to an art school, a music school mm -hmm. where I'm from. They would have never said, hey, go check out the music exactly. school. Yeah. Right. They would be like that. They, they, they wouldn't like put it down, but they wouldn't turn an eye to it. Yeah, My yeah. school would be like my school. My school would be like. Uh, you know, but what are you doing athletically? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> sports was like the one thing. It was just like, I don't even know if like at times, like if you were an athlete at our school, you know, you had so many benefits that normal fucking kids never gotten. I remember yeah. like, and I, I was prone to that, man. I saw it cause I was on the right side of that, you know, yeah. I remember, and you know, this is, you know, it's way back in the day, but I, I hit this, uh, buzzer beater for this, like for this area <laughs> game and my principal comes up to me after the game and says, man, you don't even have to come to school. You know, what? like, you can show up, like, you can be, like, three hours late tomorrow. I don't even care. Oh, my. You know, and it's like, 
What? And I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> exactly. I mean, it was like, you can totally be late to class tomorrow. And I totally was late to class that mm -hmm. next day. You know what I mean? I used that to my advantage. Yeah. But when you see that now looking back, it was just like, you see how wrong that mentality is yeah. about where our mindsets are. You know, mm -hmm. you get so caught up in, in, in small town, in small town, uh, stuff like that man where it's like you don't see outside of that town yeah sports is just like you know and some kids have the benefit to take that to the next level sure. but i mean there's a i mean you look at the handful of kids that are that are coming from these small schools that are playing you know d3 d2 ball whatever the case may mm -hmm. be you know it's like you really 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 gotta love doing that sure to go play you know d2 <laughs> college basketball football baseball and uh and and not be on that same scale of like d1 where it's getting that national national publicity and all yeah. these things you know because that's what everybody strives for but you don't really <laughs> get that but i think you know at our school and i hate like i love my town and you know, i love my school to death like i don't want them thinking that like i'm bashing on them or anything because i'm not but because it, it's not it's not just my school it's the reality well of, yeah it's, it's i mean you look at like it's any the mentality the mentality in, in in any school really mm -hmm. i mean you uh, and I'm not saying athletics is bad, but I don't think kids need to be focusing on, you know, mm. their future, you know, based solely on sports. You know, yeah. like, I want to play. Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a, you know, God, I, I, people probably hate on me for saying that, but like, I want to be a professional basketball player, you know, but like, it's just a game, bro. Like, <laughs> there's so much more to this life than, yeah. than, than just playing a game, you know? Yeah. And I mean... And you can use that, I mean... You can use it for good. You can use it for good. And you can, and I mean, I'm mm. not saying it's not inspirational. And sure. it definitely was inspirational for me, and it's made me who I am today. But I think now with our, you know, it's just, it's, it's, at times it just gets taken way too out of hand. I mean, you look at, mm -hmm. I mean, just like the NFL network now, dude, where you can sit on a fucking television and watch like six games at one time. <laughs> like, how crazy is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, the, at times it's just like, it feels like it's too much. It mm -hmm. just really feels like there's just, you know, we just need to kind of take a step back, you know, and, and if there was anything I could have learned, you know, or anything I could have done as a kid, I would have totally loved to learn, like, um, kickboxing yeah. or some jiu-jitsu or yeah. just some type of fighting that everyday people mm -hmm. could use. Yeah. You know, if I got caught up in an alleyway with some homies yeah. that, you know, that are trying to whoop my ass, I could use those skills exactly. in everyday life as opposed to if I'm playing basketball every day <laughs> and all I do, you know what I'm saying? I put yeah. a ball in a hoop and I get caught on that same alleyway, you know, you might not be really prone to fucking be able to defend yourself. Exactly. So I think like I've really picked that up as like, man, if there's anything I should have been learning as a kid or in high school, I probably should have been learning to like self-defense exactly you know and that it, it also teaches you a lot of uh <laughs> self-defense and stuff also teaches you a lot about like thinking con consciousness, consciousness yeah. the mind yeah. being mindful of yourself mindful of others and that's a beautiful thing and um yeah uh, sports sometimes isn't that much because if you're on a basketball team and you're not the star then you're not getting the rock kid yeah right. but if you are the star don't give up the rock kid. and that's that <laughs> and i'm telling you that's that yeah. small town that's that small town thing man where it's like i've seen it happen where like you know your kid's not the star how are we gonna get championships <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah grayson you got it <laughs> <laughs> but dude i'm serious like i remember like parents coming down and be like man why is my son playing you know why is my yeah because your son sucks yo <laughs> like your son like your your boy <laughs> needs to be on the bench like and I, it, it's like you get people that get so caught up with that, you know, with ego yeah. and, you know, this ego. Has he tried preaching? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Right? I mean, it's just like there's so many and, – and there's just um, – there's so many different things that that you can learn. I think like me too, man, being like in, yeah. in, uh, in marching band I and having to march – I hated it, you know, because it wasn't the cool thing to do. Mm. But what I did start learning in, in band was theory. Mm -hmm. I started learning, you know, how to discipline. read discipline, how to read music. Yeah. And um, these skills that I can apply, you know, for the rest of my life. When I'm 95 yeah. years old, hopefully, I hopefully can still sit down at a piano and mm -hmm. play something. When I'm 95 years old, I'm not going to be able to be able uh, to go dunk a basketball or, you know, yeah. I can't dunk now, of course. But to shoot a basketball, I'm not going to be able to do those things. So I, yeah. I started, you know, now that I've gotten older and gone to these, these schools, like I've realized like these are something, the things that I'm going to really be able to do for the rest of my life. Exactly. And, and I find 
enjoyment in that and I find a certain mm -hmm. light of uh, fulfillment to, to yeah. carry on that, you know? Um, okay, so last question is hopefully a little bit short and then you can play a song for us. Um, oh, no. <laughs> what are we playing? Oh, um... <laughs> pew, pew, pew! So, so the last question is what advice do you have for people? Mm. Well, Walt's got something. I'm going short. Yeah, yeah, you oh, go yeah. first. I'm no, going I'm, short and I'm not, sweet, baby. I'm not going short. I'm about, to, I'm about to preach. Follow your dreams. Don't, I mean, listen to who you want to listen to. And, and there's always good and good information to come out of just about anything, whether it's the complete opposite of what you're what they're telling you. It could be that, but like, you know, just go after how you feel. Like, you know, there's there's the thing inside you that helps you make decisions and a lot of the time listening to it is it got me where I am now. Yeah. Like I, I could have still still been in a different university, living a completely different life, but I'm not and I'm very happy for that. And it's because I made those decisions and I yeah. decided to follow what I wanted to do. And I didn't let things bring me down and people telling me that no nah, that's that's not a normal part of life that's not what everybody does good sure. luck you're you're one in a million that try it good luck so uh, i don't know I, it's like take those chances man you only live once and when we die who knows maybe they'll put you in a movie theater and tell you everything you want to know <laughs> god please do that for me but uh i don't Just I, for me, I, I, I don't know i don't know if that's gonna happen i'm getting the premiere so streaming special. called it uh, yeah that's what i got <sighs> advice for man To all, I think to always just be yourself, man. I think to embrace yourself for who you are. Don't try to fit in with any niche. Don't try to fit in with people that you don't fit in with. Um, I remember being younger, dude, and you would have like you would you would be attracted to some girls or something, and you would find ways that you would you would not be yourself to maybe yeah. impress them. And that's just a small example, but and you realize you're not really yourself. And I promise you. When you do those things, things don't really work out in your favor. Yeah. You find ways like – or life finds ways to hurt you when you kind of disconnect yourself from your actual yeah. like reality of who you are. So I think for, for kids that are growing up – I mean you look at kids that are getting bullied or kids that are you know just struggling, trying to find a way, trying to – you know that feel like they're not shit in the world because they don't maybe have – these unique skill sets or anything, but I'm telling you, there's, there's literally, there is uniqueness in everybody. And it's a matter of just being completely genuine to, to, as, to everybody. Yeah. And that sounds super corny, but I mean, if you, I really feel that if you can just be good, as good as you can be and be mm -hmm. yourself day to day, that by the end of your life, you're going to go, you might not make as much money as some people. You might not, achieve certain things as most people mm -hmm. but I, I promise to god that by the end of it all if you if you try to your best to live that way you will find happiness in ways that you never saw it coming because yeah. this life is so long and there's so many different mounds that you climb and it's a roller coaster ride dude and there's so many new experiences that you don't see coming and you know and bad shit happens along the way a lot more than good you mm -hmm. know a lot of bad stuff can happen to you before one little good thing can happen to you but um, it's just a matter of like through it all, being being yourself still, not letting mm -hmm. le letting those things change you, and um, just remaining genuine for the sake of just being genuine. You know, yeah. not not for any fulfillment that you're feeling that you could get later down the line, but just because that's the right thing to do at the right moment in time, no matter what the case may be you know so that would be my advice for kids you know and especially like young kids man growing up because i was there i got bullied i got picked on everybody loved to laugh at the you know laugh at me I'm, you know it was one of those things where you know i was parents put me in boy scouts and i'm an eagle mm -hmm. scout you know and all your homies you know you got to wear your scout shirt to school <laughs> on the monday that you're having meetings and sure. you got to tuck your shirt in and you're the only kid there and everybody's looking at you like you're an idiot <laughs> I mean, it's a real thing, you know, yeah. and, and, and being a scout was probably one of the greatest things that I've achieved in my life. Mm -hmm. So I think, and that's what I'm saying is like, if I would have let, if I would have ran with the world at that moment, yeah. if I would have let those kids um, affect me the way they did, mm -hmm. 
even though they didn't really know it, if I would have, if I would have, you know, said, you know, screw this, I don't want to do scouts anymore. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna run with the rest of the world, so I fit in right now, sure. as opposed to being myself and, and just overcoming those obstacles. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't have been the person that I am today. Yeah, I wouldn't see the world that I see, you know, the way I see it today. So I think that's what kids really need to know is, you know, be yourself and embrace and, and be happy that you, that you are, you know, yourself. You know, don't let, you know, other people try to bring you down because you might not have certain possessions or whatever the case may be you know it's there's just this there's a, a complete uniqueness that each one of us carry there's it's so cool how we're all so similar but at the same time we're all so different yeah and we all have our own uniqueness you know so that that would be my advice is just to always you know stay on that course of just being yourself and don't don't run with the world awesome thanks man um did I, did I ramble on? Oh, no, you're, you're <laughs> good. I, I feel inspired. I hope everyone is inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and so plug your things. I'm going to do like a quick outro thing, and then you can play your song. Yeah. You so, go. yeah, op we have our release show um, of our EP High Reef on November 5th at Opolis. Mm. Um and then you can find us, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, Space for Lease on Facebook, Space for Lease Music on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, and then I'll let Walt kind of discuss the tour because Walt does all the booking. He's a great guy, everybody. <laughs> Walt Blythe. Hey, it's me, Walt Blythe. <laughs> <laughs> Some call me Walter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, we're hitting the road afterwards, you know, we're doing the Opus show, and then uh, November 10th, we're going to a new territory, Mr. Uh, Big Ol' Chicago, we're gonna go uh, check out the Bean, hope the uh, Cubs win, just because they have not forever, I don't care about baseball, but um, yeah, so we're going to Chicago, then we're gonna be in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, uh, cool town, really cool town, a place called The Back Door, we will then be in Cincinnati, after that, Newport, Kentucky, right across the river, uh, Asheville, North Carolina, which is, uh, everyone says it's great. Never been there either. So we're stoked Joe for that. <laughs> Joe Rogan says it's great. He Joe says, Rogan. he says, you know what? I shouldn't talk about Asheville because people don't need to be out, know about this place. They'll fucking ruin it. <laughs> so I, I'm going to trust his word and I'm that guy that's we're going. going there. <laughs> yeah. Well, then we'll be in Nashville, Tennessee, and then we're going to end it off in Memphis with some buddies in a band called Warm. They're really cool. cool. And then we'll be back home, uh, to work on some new music, man. We already got new things pumping. Excellent. And we can find all those dates on your Facebook, on your website, web, Facebook, awesome. uh, www.spaceforreleasemusic.com. And then they're also on Facebook. You know, we'll keep you Instagram or Instagram through all the, we'll keep you updated through all the Instagrams. <laughs> Insta. Damn it. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Cool. Um, and I'm Santiago Ramones. You can, uh, find all the stuff that I do. I make music. That's on SoundCloud, but you can find all the stuff that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. Thank um, you, man. And I always end the podcast with my three things, my sort of bit of advice, uh, life philosophy, which is love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Play us out, man. That's awesome. I still tried to <laughs> Can we put that in there first? Can that stay? All right, here we go. again Hanging on by what you would call a thread You say you're tired of feeling broken and so alone Say it's easier for you to feel nothing, no, nothing at all. But I still tried calling and 
what was I thinking? But honestly, I miss your voice from time to time. Just laying here thinking that if you just pick up the phone and come on over, we'll talk for a little while, we'll have a discussion. Over just what we think we need, and if I say anything you don't want to talk about, well, that's too tough, darling. Yes, that's too tough, darling. I know I'm not what you'd expect Cause you weren't expecting anything from anyone at all But if you pick up your feet, oh I'll pick up the peace is for you But how it's so much easier To watch this all just fall through But I still tried calling But here was I thinking I should have never have picked up that phone These bottled emotions But I let it all go I tell you how I feel You don't seem to care And I guess there's no point to talk about it now What it is that I'm thinking